Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the OC Dugout Show. It is the playoff edition of the of the show, Steve, because we're talking playoffs for baseball and softball. Yes, the playoffs are here, and want to start right away, Steve. Interested to get your uh, point of view on one of the at-large bursts in Division One baseball, and Foothill secured one of those at-large um, bids over. Sir, right. I wonder if, you know, what you thought of that, um, if there was any debate in your mind, because um, I looked at the Friars um, and uh, Foothill Knights schedule and, you know, they both can make some pretty interesting um, arguments for that at large spot where um, Servite did beat El Dorado from Foothills League. Um, I think they also beat um, Villa Park from that league. Um yeah, yeah. And they also the Friars also beat San Dimas twice, um, which is a, a pretty good team in Division One. But on the flip side, Foothill beat Santa Margarita. Um, they also beat El Dorado two out of three times, but uh, they did not win win the league. And um, Foothill also beat Huntington Beach. So, um, and I think I mentioned Santa Margarita. The Eagles swept uh, Servite. I'm sure it was a tough I, – I feel like it was probably a tough decision. How, what does Steve Fryer say about this at-large um, debate here in Division One? Yeah, the formula for selecting at-large teams is pretty written out. It's uh, spelled out pretty clearly in, in on page four of the CF Southern Section Playoff Bulletin. Uh, everything – there's several categories there. They're all weighted the same. They're all weighted the same. Strength of league, strength of schedules, this and that and that and this. Um so Foothill must have come out on top um, in the formula somehow. I'd have to sit down and break it out to spend a good portion of time doing that. But I know that the uh, Southern Section people, um, they did their, as we say, due diligence and figured it out. Orange Luth was going to be, you know, in <laughs> no matter what. Everybody yeah. knew that. Who would get that second at large berth? Um, you know, Tribuco Hills was certainly a candidate for that, but uh, Dana Hills kind of took care of that and knocked them out of there. And they didn't have the 500 or better record to get in. But you got to be 500 or better. Um, both these teams were 500, Servite and uh, uh, and Foothill. So Foothill got it, and they got to go play at Santa Margarita. Now, they've already played Santa Margarita. They played yeah. on March 3, beat them 6-4. to four. So that's got to be pretty comfortable. And they also beat them last year in Division One in the second round of the playoffs. So they have that sort of going for them. But Santa Margarita they went 14 and one in the Trinity League. Wow. So uh that's a that's a tough game for Foothill. Uh, but they can do it. You know, Division One baseball, as I like to say, is the toughest team championship to win in the CF seven section. <clears throat> seven innings, 21 outs, a ball strike call, don't go your way. You know, a double play you don't turn could just derail the whole gosh darn thing. So it's pretty tough. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Fry. Now, speaking of the Eagles and all credit to the Trinity League champions, but was there any debate that Huntington B should be ranked number uh, the number one seed in Division One, not the Eagles, uh, Mr. Fryer? Well, Santa Maria is number two. Notre Dame and Sherman Oaks is number one. Oh, right. in I have to excuse me for number two. Number two. Yeah, no problem. There's a lot going on. Uh, the board, uh, Notre Dame's been number one in the state for much of the year um, by Cal High, our friends at Cal High Sports. They're number one in the CF Southern Section uh, poll, which is does says a lot about your seating and things like that, the fi final rankings. So Notre Dame and Sherman Oaks was going to be number one. Um, they also won the Boris Classic South Tournament, which was a bunch of these teams were in. Yeah, right. So that helps a lot, too. Huntington Beach, really fine team. They lost to Notre Dame and Sherman Oaks in the championship game of the Boris Classic South. Um, so I think the rankings, the rankings have a lot of play in that. And I think it went, it went pretty well. Yeah, Jay Sarah um is seated fourth. They got a long road trip. They got to go yeah. to Ukaipa. Yeah. 72 miles one way. Uh thankfully, there's the 241 toll road gonna make that somewhat easier for those guys. But that's a tough one going there. Uh, Division one champion, Division one defending champ, Jay Sarah. That's a that's a good matchup there. Um, a lot of good teams in Division one, dude. Let me tell you, Cypress is good. Uh, Pacifica yeah. has been very good. Um, you know, some really good teams up and down this division. Villa Park, 
which had a tough time of, for a while. They lost like six or seven games in a row, but they've risen back up and they may be a tough team to beat. They got too many good players with uh, Zach Brown throwing it, Brandon Lou throwing it, Gavin Grovovic hitting the heck out of it. <laughs> El Dorado finished strong with a win over Foothill. Uh, they got to go out to play San Dimas, which was a uh, good enough to be Boris Classic South Tournament. Yeah. Team to watch out for outside of Orange County Division One is Corona. Really good. Got this left-handed pitcher. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his long, multi-syllable name. Best pitcher I saw all year. Lefty. Fantastic. A lot of good teams in D1. Should be fun. Okay. Yeah, I was a little surprised initially that, you know, uh, the Santa Margarita did get the number two seed over the Oilers of Huntington Beach. But, hey, yeah. we're, if I'm debating two and three, you know, in theory, they should play each other. I just need to calm down. Um, and um, But it yeah. was uh, it was interesting to me. The baseball advisory committee selects these. They see the teams. They put it together. Those guys, those are all coaches, those baseball advisory committee dudes. They know what's going on. They, they've they got their handle on it. Um, yeah, they're going to be wrong. You know, sometimes uh, you see the team number one and they drop in the first round. And we've seen it happen. It's tough. But you got to go with what you got to do. And, uh, uh, I'm uh, you know, if I was to see these teams, I would probably do it pretty much the same way. You know, um, try and regionalize it as much as you can, if you can. But these teams are kind of spread out some. Um, Santa Margarita Foothill is a good matchup. Notre Dame, yeah. Sherman Oaks going to be at home against Hart of New Hall. Yeah, it's a good it's a good looking bracket. All right. And Division one starts on Thursday, May 4th. Yeah. Division one, three, five and seven uh, play on Thursday. Divisions two, four and six play first round games on Friday. And then once you get into the second round and beyond, they all play on the same day. All right. And looking outside of Division I, uh, Steve, I saw a modern day out of that tough Trinity League uh, grab the number four seed in Division Two, and mm -hmm. Crean Lutheran out of the Empire League, which is obviously a really tough uh, league uh, as well, got the number one seed in Division Four. What do you think about a couple of these highly seeded teams? Uh, modern day's got pitching, and uh, that, that carries you a long way in these playoffs. you got to have pitching. Uh, somebody can get you, you know, into this fifth or sixth inning and help you win a low scoring game. They've got that. Korean Lutheran comes out of the Empire League with two county top teams in it, Pacifica and yeah. um, and Cyprus. So they're kind of battle tested, too. Um, there's some good uh, first round matchups all over the place. Fountain Valley at Fullerton yeah. in Division Two is going to be really good. And Division Three. uh Two of the hottest teams in the land, Dana Hills at Aliso Niguel. So you got Ukaipa going. Ukaipa's at home against Jay Sarah. Jay Sarah, 72 miles going that way. That's east. And then you've got Dana Hills going to Aliso Niguel, 8.2 miles. Wow. <laughs> so and these three league mates for a long time. Uh, Coach Hansen and Coach Ferris, Aliso and Dana Hills. Uh, those guys play against each other too. They play, play to zillion travel ball games with and against each other. That's yeah. going to be a pretty fun game in division three on Friday. Yeah. That Dan, is. I got a question for you, man. Yeah. Norco softball, low Sal softball. Did we, did you like that one? Was that okay with you in terms of Norco yes, being sir. one and low Sal being two? Yes. Yeah. You know, Norco beat uh, low Sal earlier this year in the finals um, in the, in the uh, bullhead city tournament. So um yeah, that that makes sense. Um, okay. But what surprised me in softball, uh, Steve, was the 16 team bracket uh, in Division One. So I haven't been covering softball for the longest time. I'm I'm uh, I'm building off of uh, what the great Carlos Arias did, and before that, David Osterman at the Register. But I look back; there's not a lot of 16 team brackets in Division One. You know, the baseball softball format is usually 32 teams. But what's also interesting about this is that you get some really good teams in softball that are in uh, the wild card round. There's uh, about eight games in Division One wild card round just to get into the main draw of the 16 team bracket. So in sports like baseball and softball, that's pretty big because you're going to go to the teams. Some good teams are going to go to that wild card round. And they're going to play on Tuesday. And they're going to go, if they win, they're going to play a team on Thursday that is rested. They did not play. And in softball and baseball, it's about pitching. 
Um, you know, that's a lot of where the momentum comes is that day starting pitching. And, um, you know, a lot of times in softball, there's not a lot of depth um, in the pitching. So a couple of really good Orange t County teams are in that wild card round on Tuesday, including Huntington Beach, ranked number two in Orange County, just a couple of weeks removed from being number one in the southern section. But what happened to uh, the Oilers? They lost on a walk-off bunt uh, squeeze play at Los Alamitos in the Sunset League Championship game in eight innings, by the way. They end up second in the Sunset League. They're in the at-large, uh, the wild card game. They got to win a game to get into the first round. So this is interesting with the uh, the at-large bit. Pacifica is another team um, in the at-large as well in the, in the wild card um, round. They got to win a game on Tuesday to get to the main draw. That would put them at La Mirada um, on Thursday. You know, Pacifica, you maybe don't feel as sympathetic for. They they didn't win their league, and um, they were out. They, you know, they were the favorite in the uh, the Empire League, but they are playing better now. Huntington Beach had a pretty tough, um, you know, uh, close call to get into that out to that wild card round because that's an Oilers team, Steve, that has beat Norco and has beat Los Alamitos. Pretty good resume. So, um, you know, and I think, and I'd love to get your opinion on this because I think what's, you know, what's really happening or what's going to, I think, is going to eventually happen with Southern Section playoffs in sports like, um, well, it could happen in baseball and softball, is that football model um, of of working off the power rankings um, in, in the same season data and getting um, into uh, straight brackets that are um, – based on power rankings this season um, without any of the, um, the play in games, so to say, um, I don't, I don't have a big problem with the 16 team bracket or, you know, if you, if you, I, I like water polo elite eight, that's fine. Um, yeah. well, but I same think, thing. yeah, I think some of that, um, I think that could be coming to baseball and softball. Eventually commissioner, yeah. why God uh, retiring um, commissioner, he put out a state, you know, a letter about that next week. Or last week, but um, with baseball and softball, you can do some interesting things with the uh, you know the three game series and things like that that kind of get debated a lot. But what do you make of this uh, you know um, sixteen team bracket in softball, Steve? Well, you know that's in a, such an elite group of teams out there. Gosh, you know, <clears throat> I looked at some of the wild card round games that are uh, that are in that. Um, you know, Huntington Beach has got to play a wild card game. You know, Villa Park, I know, uh, uh, went in as a large team, but but that league, you know, Esperanza, et cetera, is pretty, is pretty tough. So, uh, and then Pacifica has got to play a, an at lar a, a wild card round game. I don't know, you know. Um, I think with the competitive equity thing, <clears throat> if you're going to do it by PowerPoints and all that, who's going who's gonna to do that for baseball and softball? You know, uh, do you have the advisory committee rank them, you know, every Monday and, you know, week by week, you get a different look at it and or you just wait till the end of the year and then just crunch all the data. I don't know. That's going to be an interesting challenge. But I think with football, when you use the current year as yeah. your baseline, 65 uh, percent of your weighted baseline for your playoff, your PowerPoints profile, pretty good. If you can do it, if you've got the manpower to do it and the system in place to do it. Yeah, do it. You know, put you know, uh, and place your teams in the brackets by how well you did this during the current year. I, I it's better than because two years ago you had a great senior class, but you don't have that senior class this year. It's a it's an interesting interesting concept. I think uh, Rob Wygott's correct. It's going to happen. It's going to take a lot of work uh, to make it work, but uh, it can be done. I think foot football showed that it's a viable thing. But again, they have an outside group, calpreps.com, does all those uh, power rankings. Is there a calpreps out there for baseball or softball? Hmm, I don't know. So not not right now, but maybe somebody, maybe you can do it in-house. It's a lot of work, but uh, it could be done. Yeah, it's going to be interesting where it goes. Um, you know, the other, you know, one of the interesting things that really, you know, just so people understand how it became this way was, there was there was at the beginning of the year they placed 27 teams in division 1 and you need 25 of those teams to be entries and eligible for the playoffs 
to make a 32 team bracket. And they came up one short at 24 and they had to go to a 16 team bracket. And yeah. one of the teams that, um, that wasn't 500 and wasn't an automatic qualifier was modern day. And they lost, um, you know, their last game, a uh, second game of a double header to rosary. And that was it. If they would have won that game, we might not be, we probably wouldn't even have in this conversation. There'd be a 32 team bracket. Um, so uh, these are interesting uh, Southern section rules with playoffs, um, but the Southern section's evolving and we'll see where it goes. Um, so another softball question for you. Yeah. What Orange County team has the biggest op chance to win a SAF championship? Is it Cypress in Division Three? Is it Tribuco Hills in Division Five? Who is it? Well, actually, the Mustangs didn't make it in, believe it or not. They, even though they were the number one ranked team in Division Five, they weren't automatic qualifier out of the CV League, a four-team league, and they also um, there was no at-large burst in that division, so they they got that that got that for shit. sure. When I saw the last poll come in, I thought, oh, Tribuco Hills, they're flying high in D5. But yeah. they, I didn't even look at that at D Division 5 bracket. I looked at one and two and yeah. three. They didn't get in, huh? They didn't get in. And, you know, that's a similar story of, you know, at a, at a it was much more extreme last year with Canyon not making in Division 3. They were the same situation. Mm -hmm. But Canyon had won the Michelle Crew Classic that, you know, that season and they had an ace division one pitcher in Kylie McGee going to Arizona state. So they were looking like a huge um, team to watch in division three. If they could just get in division three, they're your Michelle crew classic champion when the, maybe the toughest tournament in the state, Yeah, they didn't make it in division three, but to answer your question, I think, I think Los Al's got a great um, chance in division one. Um, you know, I think the, the playoff um, schedule was favorable for them to, you know, make sure that they manage their ace, Berkeley Vance, well, and she doesn't have to uh, get, you know, put up too many, um, you know, back-to-back -back tough uh, pitching situations. If she's rested and dialed in, I think that's going to be big for, for Los Sal. And they have lots of firepower, and they have lots of speed on that team. They'll generate runs. And like I said, um, you know, they won, they just won a big game with a walk-off squeeze bunt. So they have a very – you know, um, smart uh, coach and Rob Weil, who will he'll pretty much, you know, do whatever he, you know, he'll put his team in any kind of situation to uh, to win a game. He'll yeah. squeeze bunt, he'll uh, double steal, he'll he'll fake um, bunt and run people. Um, he does some interesting thing, and he has some kids that can really drive the ball. You know, either out over the fence or to the gap. So watch out for Los Al. I think Orange Lutheran and Los and Huntington Beach are really good as well in Division One. Uh, Cyprus, I think in Division Three is going to be tough. Um, okay. We'll see how how they do. They're the top seed. I I also I like them a lot. I also like number two seeded Elisa Nagel in that division uh, as well. The South Coast League champion. They have a lot of depth. They have a lot of pitchers. And um, there's an interesting group of OC teams at the top of Division Two. They're all in the top half of that bracket, and that's uh, Jay Sarah Marina and canyon so there's some tough teams in division two uh, i know uh rio mesa at the bottom of that division is pretty good um from you know how they played at the michelle crew classic this year so um we got a lot of oc teams i think it's going to be a really uh, strong um playoffs i've been really impressed with the a lot of high quality play um in orange county softball this year i think it's a, it's an up year and i think there's going to be a couple champions well, you got to have pitching in your in uh, in softball. You got to have pitching in baseball, right. and uh, you know a lot of pressure on these young people coming into the playoffs. Uh, I don't know um, how many championships we're going to have uh, come out of Orange County on the on our two diamond sports, Dan. Um, you know, baseball. You know, maybe maybe we got Margarita Huntington, Jay Sarah can do it again. Rally around, boy. We're going to find out, but it's playoff time here for. Dan Albano and myself, and we're going to have all this covered all this week. We are have a busy week coming up. We might get some rain on Thursday. But I don't know if that's going to mess things up, but hang out with us here, and we'll have it all covered for you. And thanks again for joining us.